This is an example dashboard app built with the Next.js app router. You can see that the navigation feels kinda slow. The app router came with a lot of nice stuff, but unfortunately making the navigation feel fast is not as straightforward as it used to be with the Pages router. Even for a small demo app like this one, we can already feel the difference. That said, there are multiple ways to improve this and give back that SPA navigation feel. We are going to explore 10 different ways to improve navigation performance, where each one has its own benefits and use cases. And one of them is actually kinda weird. But yeah, let's get started because we have a lot to cover today. First, let's understand the structure of this app. We have a simple username password sign-in page where we can sign in as an admin or as a normal user. Once we're in, we'll go to the dashboard section of our app, which has a layout. This layout is a dynamic server component that gets the session and passes it to a context provider so we can use it to render our page. This is useful because we can render the admin link if the user is an admin without having to make it pop later after the first render. But the downside is that it also makes the root of our app become a dynamic component, which makes all nested pages also be considered dynamic pages. Even this page that only has static content will be considered a dynamic page because of that layout. And that's the main reason why the navigation feels slow. Every time we click on a link, we have to wait until the serverless function on Vercel starts responding. Here you can see that it took about 300 milliseconds from when I clicked the button until we started receiving the loading state. And that gets even worse with slower connections. By the way, sometimes the production app navigation behaves differently than in the development environment. So all the examples I show in this video are production builds deployed to Vercel. I made the links change color when we are clicking them, so you can see better the time it takes. So yeah, let's figure out how to improve this. The most obvious way to improve the navigation is to add a loading.tsx for your pages. We can also remove the suspense that was wrapping our dynamic component. Now if we check our app, we can see that the navigation becomes instant, giving that SPA feel to it. That's because as soon as we visit the page, Next.js will prefetch the loading TSX content for each link visible on the page so that when we click the link, the initial content is already loaded in the browser. The downside is that if we want skeletons that match our pages like this, we need to add a loading TSX for each one of our pages. And if we have some static elements like titles and search inputs, we will also need to add them to the loading TSX file, which can get kind of annoying. That's why I usually don't like using loading.tsx files. You'll also notice that the table page navigation is still slow. That's because instead of having real links here, we're navigating programmatically by calling router.push on a click event handler. And since there aren't real visible links on the page, Next.js can't prefetch them automatically. We'll see how to fix that soon, but let's take a look at another approach first. We're gonna go back to the initial example without the loading files, and all we're gonna do is enable PPR. For Next16, it is integrated into the cache components flag like this. But if you're still on X15, this is how you enable it. And just by doing this, without having to change anything else on our code, we get the same result we had with loading TSX files. The static shell outside of the suspense boundary will work just as the loading TSX files, and will be automatically prefetched for all the visible links on the page. Of course, we still have the same problem we had with the table page since these aren't real links, so they can't be automatically prefetched. So let's take a look at how we can fix this next. One obvious thing we could do is to use actual links instead of router.push. But if you want to use router.push for some reason, there is still a way to improve the navigation here, which is by manually prefetching the links when the data gets loaded. By calling it like this, we will actually prefetch the whole page, including the dynamic part. This will make the navigation much faster as it won't even show the loading skeleton, but it can also put a lot of unnecessary load to your backend. If you want the same default behavior of the link component, you can pass the prefetch kind as auto. This will make it only prefetch the static shell. And you can get creative here, like fully prefetching the first item, but prefetching only the static shell for the rest of them. You can also prefetch on hover instead of when the data loads. And you can even integrate it with some third-party libraries like this one that will try to predict where you're likely to click based on your mouse movement and will prefetch the links accordingly. Now, if we want, we can also customize the prefetch of the link components on the cards page. Let's make the same thing here, where we will fully prefetch the first item and leave the rest with the default behavior. Now, I think we can say that we have an actual fast app with Next.js. But we can still go one step further. To be honest, I feel that server-side caching doesn't make much sense for this app. But for the sake of this example, let's pretend that this is some public data that doesn't change very often but is dynamic, like some products on an e-commerce website or maybe some posts on your personal blog website. 
So let's remove the session checks from our layout and from the functions that get the dynamic data. Now let's add the use cache directive to our dynamic pages. We also need to turn our page into an async component to be able to use use cache. We can also make the cache update on a schedule like this. And we can configure a tag so we can manually invalidate the cache when the data changes. And this makes our sidebar navigation instant without showing any skeletons and without adding unnecessary load to our servers. But you'll find that it doesn't work with our details page. It seems that use cache doesn't really work well with dynamic routes. For this to work, the workaround we have right now is to export a generate static params returning at least one of the item IDs. This will make the page for this item be generated and cached at build time. And the rest will be cached on demand when the users access them. To be honest, I've had some problems beside this one with the new use cache directive. There are open issues and discussions around it, so hopefully they will improve it on a future release. But yeah, let's take a look at a more real example where server-side cache can be useful. Say you have a CMS. It could be Shopify for your e-commerce website or WordPress or Payload CMS for a blog website. You can get the data into your Next.js app from the CMS's API and cache that data so that you can show the page instantly. Most CMSs have a webhook feature where they can call your API to let you know when some data has changed. You can use this webhook request to invalidate the cache data. This way you will have a dynamic website with the performance of a static one. There is a very good article on this topic with an actual demo app that you can try out. I'll leave the link in the description in case you want to check it out. There's also a demo app that you might have heard of from Twitter. Next Faster. Prefetching and caching is the base of it, but they go one step further. They changed the link behavior by making it navigate as soon as you click the link, instead of when you release the click, which is the default behavior. They also made it so that images from the target page are prefetched on hover, so that when you navigate to the new page, all the images are already loaded into the browser. This is a very interesting demo app, and they have an explanation on the repos readme that even includes an infra cost breakdown. I made an article some time ago with a demo app where one of the examples tries to replicate the behavior of the next faster app. So if you want to see this on a minimal example, I'll leave the link on the description. By the way, the repo for this example is open source and you can check the full div for each one of the examples here. Okay, let's go to the next topic. For this one, we'll take a different approach. Let's go back to the original slow app and let's not make the navigation faster. Instead, let's create a link loading indicator that uses the link state to show a spinner. Now we can put this inside of our link component. We can even remove the suspense so that we don't have this loading cascade. And if we check our app, we'll see the spinner when we click the link. If we go to Figma, you'll notice this pattern for switching pages. We can also implement this blur effect if we want. All we need to do is put a fixed component that renders on the right side of the sidebar and has a blur filter. Let's also add a fade in animation. These animation classes come from the Tailwind Animate CSS library. If you're using ShadCN UI, you probably already have it configured. Now, if we go back to our app, we'll see this cool effect when we switch pages. This is what I did on my startups app for switching teams. The implementation is a little different since I'm programmatically calling router.refresh here. I'm wrapping it with start transition and using the pending state to show the blur, which results on the same effect. That SPA-like instant navigation isn't the important thing to make your app feel fast. The important thing is giving some instant feedback to the user as soon as they click a link. As long as we do that, our app won't feel slow. What we should avoid is this, where we click a link and nothing happens for a while. Also, one thing that you might have noticed is that this loading happens every time, even when we're going back to pages that we have just visited. We can improve this with the next tip. We can configure some caching behavior on our next config file. This will make visited dynamic pages be cached on the client side for 30 seconds after you visited them and static pages for 3 minutes. This was the default behavior for Next.js 14 but it was removed on Next.js 15. Now, if we check our app, we'll see that the loading doesn't show again for pages visited recently. We only have the problem that the spinner is still showing even though the navigation is basically instant. To fix this, we can use this cool spin delay library. We just wrap our pending state with use spin delay and set a delay with a minimum duration. We just need a little bit, so let's make the delay 30 milliseconds and the minimum duration of 100 milliseconds. Now we can see that the spinner is gone if the navigation finishes in less than 30 milliseconds. One thing you need to be careful about when using this configuration is that if you call some mutation that changes the data, you want to call router refresh afterward, so that you don't show stale data to the user. 
By the way, I usually don't have this enabled in my apps because I use 10 stack query for fetching data. And since 10 stack query automatically caches the data, we basically get the same result without having to add this configuration. If this video gets a good engagement, I might make a dedicated video on how I actually build my apps, showing the libraries I use and explaining why I usually don't use server actions. If you want me to make this video, make sure to engage somehow with this video by liking, subscribing or commenting down below. Alright, let's go to the next one. You can switch your pages, layouts or API routes to run on the Edge runtime by adding this export to your file. The Edge runtime is lighter than the default Node.js runtime, which can help improve the code starts with the serverless functions. It also runs closer to the user, which improves the time for the initial response. That said, it also means that your function will run farther away from your database, which will make the dynamic content download actually slower, resulting in a total time actually longer than with the default Node.js runtime. Another downside is that it doesn't support everything Node.js does, so it can cause issues with some libraries. I also saw some tweets recommending that you just enable Fluid Compute instead of trying to use the Edge Runtime. They say that it has all the benefits of the Edge Runtime but without the constraints. When I tried it on the demo app I built for this video, which has Fluid Compute enabled, I couldn't notice a meaningful difference on the latency with or without the Edge Runtime. It seems that when you have Fluid Compute enabled, the functions are not replicated to each Edge location even if you're using the Edge Runtime. It feels to me that they are planning to deprecate the Edge runtime in favor of enabling Fluid Compute. I could be wrong here, but even the middleware's default runtime might change to Node.js in the future according to this blog post. There is also a tweet from Lee Rob from some time ago where he explains why Vercel stopped using the Edge runtime for rendering pages. I'll leave the link in the description in case you want to take a look. That's it for the Edge runtime, now let's go to the next one. This is the weird one I mentioned in introduction, but it's surprisingly effective. Some of you may know React Router as the successor of the Remix framework, but it can also be used as a standalone library for implementing routing on vanilla React apps, which means we can also use it with Next.js. All we have to do is create a catch-all page like this and put all of our React Router definitions here, with all the routes and the components that will be rendered for each route. By doing this, we are basically giving up all of the Next.js features for frontend. We won't use the file-based routing anymore and we'll stop using the imports from next link and next navigation. Instead, we will use the ones from the React Router package. As a result, we'll have a very fast app with an SPA feel to it. And you notice that we get this fast navigation even for the programmatic navigation we are doing with the tables page, without even having to think about prefetching here. This is how T3Chat from Theo was built. And then Josh from Josh Tried Coding used the same technique for his new project Content Port and even wrote an article about it. Then people even started making templates with the React Router boilerplate pre-configured. Alright, but what's the catch? Well, we are basically getting our whole app from the initial page request. For a small app like this one, that's not a big deal, but we can already see the difference in the amount of resources loaded and the time it took to load the page. And this is only gonna get worse the more the app grows. This also means that we will have to compile all of our pages during development, which can make the development environment feel very slow. Julius, who actually works on the T3Chat codebase, even made a tweet about it. If you think normal Next.js dev server is slow, then you should try this when everything is in one bundle. It may be fast for client navigations, but it has the X implications. What have you done, Theo, by introducing this to the world? To which Theo replied, I specifically told everyone not to do it and that's a bad idea. So yeah, this is the feedback from people actually using this technique in production. Of course, we can implement lazy loading to make it work for larger apps, but at some point we'll basically be making our own version of Next.js. And we might even introduce the same problems because of the lazy loading so the navigation becomes slow again. And I heard Next.js is actually considering to implement a way to make this kind of SPA natively in the framework. Not sure how accurate this information is, nor when it will happen, but it's something to keep an eye on. So yeah, in general, I don't think I can recommend this option. Let's take a look at the next one. Remember when I said that the slowness happens because our pages are considered dynamic and that this happens because we are using server components on our pages? Well, how about we stop that? Let's remove a sync from all of our layouts and pages and then fetch all the dynamic data from the client component just like we used to do before the app router was introduced. So I integrated 10 stack query so we have a better experience here. I would usually use TRPC for this, but for the sake of this demo, I'll just make them simple Next.js API routes. Now we can see that our pages are considered static and we have instant navigation between them. 
except for the details page. Even though we did the same thing here, this page has a dynamic route, so it's still considered dynamic. So yeah, even though this method can improve the navigation in some places, it is not as effective as I wish it were. Another thing you should understand about this method is that we are effectively doing two requests to get the page. First, we make a request to get the page, then the page makes the request to get the data. While in the other examples using server components, we only make one request for the page and the server responds first with the skeleton and then it will start streaming the page data through the same HTTP response, which will make the initial page load a little faster. You can clearly see this by right-clicking the page and selecting View Page Source. With the server component example, we'll see that the dynamic data is also present here. But with the client component example, the data is not included. This also used to hurt SEO, as this is what crawler bots would see when they visit your site. Recent crawlers also wait for the dynamic data fetched later. So this is not as important as it used to be, but it's still something to keep in mind if your app needs a good SEO. By the way, this part is also true for the React Router example as all pages there are also client components. And it will also be the case for our next example. All right, let's migrate our app to the old pages router and see what we get. We don't need to migrate everything. We can keep our backend on the app router and migrate only the front end. The code itself will be very similar to the last example, as all pages will be client components. The main difference is in the way we configure our layout. And also, the folder structure needs to be different as we can't ignore files and folders in the pages router. Now, if you check our app, we will notice that the navigation is fast by default. The details page with the dynamic route is also fast, even the tables page where we are navigating with router.push is fast. One of the apps in my workplace has this exact structure where the front end is using the pages router and the back end is using the app router. The project is running really great and we feel no need to migrate to another structure for now. One thing I noticed though is that if you use the proxy feature or middleware if you're still on Next15, the table page with programmatic navigation will stop being immediate as it will have to make the proxy request before navigating to the page. But yeah, if you use the pages router and don't use the middleware, we will basically have the same result as the React router demo and we will still be entirely in the Next.js ecosystem. So I think you should consider this method before integrating React router into your app. And that's it for the 10 tips. If you like videos like this with a lot of information in a short amount of time, I think you also like this one. And that's it, see you in the next one. Ja ne.